Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a new EUSU board. If you've followed my channel for some time, you know that I'm actually pretty fond of EUSU boards, especially for the fact that I've gotten a lot of them, specifically the, um, the Z11, which you'll see right here. It has a different set of keycaps on it. Those are just basic uh, white on black um, PBT keycaps. But this is a 60% 60, 60 board that actually can be modded to sound amazingly well for its price. It is currently on Amazon Prime Day Sale 2 for $10 for the monochrome version. So this is a an extremely budget board. Now one thing about this board though has been the fact that ever since it was released it had the Otemu style hot swap sockets. And by that I mean the round ones that will not accept legs from switches that have wider legs, such as a lot of the Gatorons, most of the Kale, um, some of the higher end ones are going to have one wider leg than the other, so they're really meant for a clamp style mechanism instead of a, a round switch pin hole. Because um, those were, I think those are remnants from ZIFs, zero insert four sockets, but don't don't quote me on that. So today we're taking a look. This is a new layout. It's a new keyboard. It's the EU Z19. I have not seen it before. I saw it. It came across my feed. Um, I believe it was $32.97. It was a little bit more than I'd usually pay for an Yusu, but it is a basically a full size. It's a compressed full size. Um, I'm not sure if they have a... Uh, I guess it's just compressed full size, or it's like a 96% because it's like an 1800 but not exploded out. But this is called the Z19. Now we did get one with um, brown switches and a black and gray cover. All right, so let's see. Out of the box, we have instructions. Thankfully, uh, I mean, PE foam's great because, you know, but I've got plenty. I like that they put a bubble wrap that can help protect it some. We've got an extra space bar in case we want to go orange. When we've got a USB-A to USB-C cable with a angled port, because it must have an angled port. And then it looks like we have a couple of spare switches, and as well as a keycap puller, a switch puller, and an orange escape key. It's pretty standard for the USU boards for the, them to include this this stuff right out of the box. Um, pretty much uh, can expect a count on something like that from a USU. But this is the first USU, at least that I've come across, that has this. Go ahead and take out one of these brown switches. Bam. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is the new style hot swap socket that will accept any switch you've got. Let me see. So we can take some box kales, which, let me see if I can bring it up close enough. You see how the, the leg or the pin on the right is wider on by almost double than the pin on the left. That's why those cannot go in unless you shave or snip off a piece of it. And I don't recommend anyone try that. And I know from experience. So anyway, we can take any one of our switches and pop it right on in and we're good to go. Like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> yeah. So we have a now Yusu board that has the ability to use any switches. What is that doing? That is opening up an entire new world of possibilities for modifications. Now, one thing that I can also tell, and I will be opening her up at a later date, there seems to be some sort of foam beneath the PCB, but there's also plate foam. This is the first EUSU I have seen with plate foam. It has plate PCB foam and actually has something underneath. I don't think I've ever come across an EUSU that had 
anything but the PCB inside of the case. So it looks like they have made some changes in order to, you know, make up for, well, I mean, they're still staying budget, but now they're going with a, you know, they're, they're adding things that I think are, are important. Now, as we can see, the design here is almost exactly the same as um, the Yusu C11. I mean, obviously it's a much bigger case, but even the, um, we see the uh, logo below the feet. Basically, it seems like they just took it and upsized it by like 10%, maybe 15% um, for the bottom case. So I know exactly what I'm going to find when, I, when I'm in there. And even though it's actually got a decent amount of heft, adding a little bit of silicone in there, it's going to make a difference. Stabilizers are actually not all that bad either. Let's see what she looks like once we plug her in. All right. All right, the LEDs are not quite that bright, but again, we're dealing with a new Yusu board. Um, let me see, does it have the effects on here? I think let's just, just turn it off, yeah. And sometimes they'll add the effects on here, sometimes they won't. They're very, they, they have sub legends, but they're extremely hard to read. I mean, they're on there, but you have to... See? If I put it up straight, you can hardly see. But if I give it an angle, it'll be like, Oh, look! There are sub-legends there. So, uh, this will take care of... Basically, I mean, you got your tilled. You have your home. You have page up, page down. You have N. Now, do we have delete and insert? Yeah, delete and insert right there. So it looks like we, we do have... Oh, we've got insert and delete right there, too. So we've actually got two spots for that. So for me, I know... I mean, those are the keys I have. I need tilled, I need insert, I need delete. I mean, I prefer to have page up, page down, and home, which these have, too. And in two different places. So it makes it that much more convenient. Um, as to the effects on this. Just out of curiosity. All right, so it's got a, a decent set of effects of lights and also solid colors as well. Um, I'm a sucker for being able to pick a solid color that uh, matches or accentuates the keycap set that I'm using. But um, we've got one set of uh, feet uh, for typing. The uh, default angle on this, I don't have my keyboard, but it's really low, I would say four or five. Um, I'll measure it here in a second. But, I mean, overall, and we've got something that's got our number lock, our caps lock indicator, and it's not using a key. Uh, to me, I don't know if it, this is as much to everybody else, but for me, it's a pet peeve when a keyboard manufacturer says, ah, skip adding an LED, just use one of the ones already there. Because it's like, now you're giving multiple meanings to one key, and then that key is supposed to, I mean, the LED is supposed to be for decoration. And if you need notification, that should be separate. But that's just me. That's just me. So, so far, uh, like I said, this I paid a little bit more than usual, but I'm actually, I'm decently impressed. I like the fact that I can put any switches in here. Um, 
This does not look to have anything other than the um, the shorty shift, the 1.75U shift um, key here, I believe. Um, other than that, I think you're not going to have much problem, except maybe with the zero. So I know some, some uh, keycap sets only have the long zero instead of the long and the short one. But other than that, I would believe that this actually would work with, with um, a lot of keycap sets. These do appear to be OEM keycaps uh, from what I can gather. Now this layout is a little bit odd because I mean, I am used to those being here, but again, I feel like I've got a TKL. I mean, if I pull out a TKL, if I have a TKL, here's a TKL. And this is also an EUSU. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's even a little bit shorter than a TKL. I'd give it almost 10 millimeters uh, less, less wide than a TKL. So, now obviously, I'm used to where all the position of the keys are, but I'm curious as to giving this a try. Because for the price, for what it offers, and the fact that I know I can take this apart, this uh, particular, um, yeah, this is aluminum, I do want to say, but just to be sure. But that could be steel. No, it is steel, never mind. So we got a plastic bottom, and we got a steel top with a plate. So um, I have painted these before, and I've had good luck. So I will probably, so I'll be coming back to this one to give it a full mod, taking it apart. Um, I may, may lube the switches and the stabilizers and do like a stock tuned sound test to see what it sounds like. But right now, I'm going to leave you guys with just a stock sound test of how this keyboard sounds. And hopefully got, give you guys an idea to see if you guys, I mean, if this Z19 interests you. I mean, like I said, it's a different layout, so it's not something that we're necessarily used to, but can it be used as a daily? I think I'll probably give it a try once I modify it. I mean, at this point, it's not bad, but it's just not daily driver material yet. So until the next transmission, keep calm, keyboard on, but please stay tuned for the sound test.